What's up, my friend? I hope you're doing well. And today I just wanted to have an open conversation with you regarding sample libraries and pricing. So the, the main question is, are sample libraries too expensive? And this is an ongoing debate. It's, it's really something that I think people have strong opinions over because um, with technology becoming ever more present and AI also coming into the mix, sample libraries are something that it's, it's difficult to put a tangible value on because um, it's completely relative to all of us, you know, like we, we, we see things differently. We treat different, uh, items and purchases differently. So in today's video, I just wanted to give you maybe four things to think about four different points to consider. And there's really no right or wrong way to think about it, but maybe just, um, you know, a couple things to think about. And then maybe I would love for you to share your thoughts with me in the comments below. If you think sample libraries are too expensive or if they're in a better place today than they were a decade ago, I would love to hear your thoughts on that. But in case, uh, before we get into that though, in case you are a sample library addict like I am, or you love sample libraries in general, and you, you love strings and stuff like that, I would love to give you my sample library buyer's guide in case you don't have it yet. It's a completely free PDF that I've put together containing all my recommendations from strings, wind spreads, percussion to things like piano libraries, jazz libraries, ethic libraries, all that great stuff, sound design. I put it all in there. I've consolidated it, super condensed, and I wanted to give it to you absolutely free as kind of like a buyer's guide that you can keep on hand. If you're on the market for a new library, you're curious about my thoughts, um, you can refer to it anytime. So if you want to grab that, it's the first thing in the box below. You can click it to download it. Um, absolutely free is my gift to you. And uh, it's my thank you to you for watching this video today. <clears throat> Excuse me. So <clears throat> without further ado, let's kind of dive into that question. Are sample libraries too expensive? Well, the first thing I think we, we need to think about or consider is comparing it to hiring real musicians, right? And this brings up the point of that we know that 99% of the time, if not 100% of the time, if the musician knows what they're doing, then the live musician will always create a better result than your sample libraries. And it's, it's difficult to place a value on that. It's more of just what you prioritize in your music, right? But... <clears throat> for example, if I'm trying to go for a really realistic results, like if I have a solo passage that I really want to bring out and have exposed in the context of a fuller mix, then hiring a live musician would be wise because then it allows me to not have to worry about making the performance sound realistic because it is a real player, right? Whereas if you have a sample library, then naturally you have to, you have to play it in, you have to edit, you have to quantize, you have to process it a little bit you know, whatever it is, you have to worry about the programming of the instrument from the developer, all these things start to come to mind. So are sample libraries too expensive? Well, if you really value live performances, then in that regard, you could say, yes, sample libraries are too expensive because they're not really going to match the realism of a real player anyway, right? And that's maybe the way you see it, which is totally fine. But what if you have to hire a live orchestra instead of just one musician, you have to hire, let's say a hundred people well, now suddenly your budget goes all the way up. If you hire one person, let's say for $50 or $100, a sample library could cost you, let's say three, 400 bucks for a full-fledged string library. But if you hire a live orchestra, that's gonna cost you into the thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, right? If you hire a full orchestra with uh, the scoring stage and the sound engineers and all of that stuff, the budget really starts to add up. And so in that case, sample libraries relatively become quite affordable, right? And that's something to keep in mind as well. Not a lot of us can hire live musicians, let alone whole orchestras, because our budgets don't just don't allow for them, right? And I'm a good example, right? <clears throat> I don't make enough to um, hire a live orchestra every time I want a piece of mine performed. It's just not practical. So that's where sample libraries for me come into play. And um, if you think of it in that regard, I don't think sample libraries are too expensive because um, you would literally have a recorded orchestra on hand that you can use any time <clears throat> compared to hiring a real orchestra, which you would have to hire every time. Um, so it, it, that's, that's one of the big differences there. Right. And the other thing though, is that because a live orchestra is so realistic or live musicians play, um, very naturally, you do have the recording for life. So that has some value for sure. But again, if you need to, you know, uh, hire them again, or you need to edit parts in different sessions, then again, that budget is going to add up because they have to be paid for their time. Whereas sample libraries don't because you usually, for the most part, you own them once you can use them anytime. And in that way relatively becomes more affordable. So that's the first thing I want to consider is what, what is the cost compared to hiring real musicians from a single person to a full complete ensemble? The, the ranges are quite different, but maybe consider that as a, as a point of reference. The second thing 
is um, more specifically sample libraries are something that we own for life, right? So that has a lot of value actually. If you think about, um, again, hiring every time versus keeping something forever, then it's, it's a lot um, easier to kind of manage financially because uh, with the exception of subscription services, let's say East West Composer Cloud or Musia or whatever that may be, most sample libraries offered are a one-time purchase. So I don't care if it's $20 or $2,000, if it's something that will be practical for you and you own it for life and you don't have to pay for it again and again and again, then the value of it goes all the way up if it's more practical for you, right? If the library is practical for your purposes. But again, if you're hiring live musicians, <clears throat> no matter how good they may be, the recurring cost is going to be something you have to take into account. So that's the second factor is, it, it, you know, is, is shelling out money for a live performers every single time you need them something that you're willing to do? And if it's yes, if you can afford it, then that's fantastic. Because again, the live performers will always give you a better result, but you don't own the performers for life, right? You have to, um, you have to continuously pay them each time you want their services. Whereas sample libraries, yes, they're a little bit less realistic in general, but um, you do own them for life and you can have that burden off of your mind knowing that uh, you own it once or you own it forever but you only paid once right so that's number two is owning for life versus paying every time number three is comparing your libraries with other libraries that offer similar instrumentation or similar value so for example if i was to compare css to something like berlin symphonic strings or berlin strings from orchestral tools the prices are vastly different Right. So CSS is $399, I believe. So it's like 400 bucks for a full fledged string library. Whereas Berlin strings or Berlin symphonic strings, they offer a deeper articulation set, um, deeper sampling, and it's in the thousand dollar range. I think it's like 799 or 899 euro range. So that adds up to about a thousand, a thousand, you know, 1100, 1200 bucks. At least when I purchased it, even with an EDU discount, that's about how much I paid back in the day. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, that again, like our sample library is expensive. Well, it depends on where that library sits in terms of the competition in comparison to the competition, right? So if you look at CSS and you're like, wow, that's really expensive. Like I can't just shell a 400 bucks for strings, but then you look at Berlin strings and you're like, wow, that's like triple the price. Okay, now suddenly CSS seems a lot cheaper. And then you look at the contents of the library and you see that CSS is not just legato. There's the, all the standard articulations, there's spiccato, staccato, pizzicato, marcato, um, you know, harmonics, tremolos, trills, things like that, then suddenly it becomes a lot more valuable. And it's like, okay, actually, this library seems like a great deal because every other set string library I'm looking at seems to be up in that register of like 800, 900, a thousand dollars. So if CSS is on the lower end of the spectrum, then really it, it's not that expensive compared to other things um, that are direct competition. So it's all about it's all about relativity, right? When you compare, um, you start to branch out, you see what's out there, and then you find out what's the best fit for your needs, and then go from there. Now you might decide that going the more expensive route is actually better for you because naturally, I think our minds assume that things that, that are more expensive are naturally more valuable and are just better compared to things that are cheaper. Even though it's easier for us to invest in things that are cheaper, um, we also kind of associate a worse quality with them, I think a lot of the time. So things that are more expensive, we kind of expect and respect that price as well because um, we know that the developer has put a, a certain amount of effort into it to think that it's worth justifying that price for the product, right? So when I think of Berlin Strings, I think of high class, I think deep, deep sampling, I think good programming. And for the most part, that is very true when I've played with it. Um, it's very, very deep in terms of the articulation sets and the way you can link different articulations together. You can craft it to your own workflow. Whereas when I think of CSS, I think of good value, um, strong workhorse because it has all the basic articulations, but it's not overly comprehensive where it overwhelms you with the amount of choice that they give you, you know? So when, in that case, thinking about it relatively, I think CSS is very good value. I think um, the all the libraries they offer are around that price range with the exception of the piano, but um, they're, they're all very, very fairly priced in comparison to everything else that's on the market that offers similar stuff. And I think a lot of people would agree with me on that as well. So uh, yeah, that's number three is just compare, uh, comparing to other instrumentation or other libraries that offer similar things and uh, seeing where it lies in, uh, in totality with all of that stuff. And that can help you answer that question as well. 
of is our, or our sample libraries too expensive? And fourth and finally is all down to you personally. So how, how much value do you place on a certain library and how much do you think you'll be using that library on in your day-to-day -day work? Because that ultimately that's the most important thing, right? The practicality of it is so, so key, so important. Because again, if you can see yourself using this library every single day, especially if they're like paid projects, right? Let's say you you shell out 400 bucks for CSS, but then you can see yourself using it every single day and the projects you're using it on will pay you, let's say 200 bucks each. And then you have five projects you know, over the course of a month. Well, that's already a thousand dollars. So you already made up your investment of 400 bucks. And so in that case, it's, it's not expensive at all because it paid for itself, right? You use the library in projects and you got paid for it. And so the library basically paid for itself and more. So that's, that's another thing to consider. How much practically are you going to be using it on a day to day? If you buy something and you don't end up using it at all, then yeah, you're out 400 bucks and you have no way of making it up. Um, maybe you're a hobbyist and you don't have professional work, which is totally fine. Right. But you have to consider that you might not be making that money back anytime soon with music or, or projects. Right. So in that case, then you might think, yes, it's a little bit more expensive. Um, because I don't have an immediate use for this library to actually make that money back. So it's a slightly different approach, but again, something to consider. I think it's all relative compared to, um, you know, other people. Um, but ultimately you just have to ask yourself, how practical is this library for me? And do, will I see myself using it, uh, for, you know, my, my own personal projects, if it gives you a sense of satisfaction and happiness, then that could be totally worth it too. And you might think it's not expensive. It's totally worth it for you because maybe it inspires new ideas for you. It, it engages your creativity. That is priceless, right? And again, if you are using it for paid projects and you're making the money back right away, then of course it's not expensive because you're literally just making the money back um, and, and more, right? So, uh, but yeah, that, that's kind of those four things I kind of wanted to bring up today uh, to consider. So number one, again, is the cost of comparing or the com comparing the cost of sample libraries versus hiring mu real musicians, uh, one versus many. Of course, the more musicians you hire, the more expensive it's going to be, and therefore the more uh, affordable sample libraries will seem, right? Number two is considering that sample libraries are something we own for life compared to, again, real musicians who you have to pay every single time you want to hire them, of course, with better results. But again, sample libraries are usually something you can buy once and own for life. So that's definitely, there's some value there. Uh, number three is just comparing it with other libraries on uh, the market with similar instrumentation or similar offerings. You might find that one library that you're looking at is actually much more expensive compared to its competition. So maybe you'll look at the, um, you know, the competition and you go with one of those if you want to. Um, so that is a lot, it's, it's pretty relative there. And then again, fourth and finally is just how much will you be using it practically in your own work? Are you going to be just buying it and then not using it at all? In that case, it could seem pretty expensive. Or will you be using it right away on a day-to-day -day basis and then the projects you you use it on pay you back and even more and you, uh, you make your money back right away. And in that way, it seems very affordable because it's a long-term tool that you can use for the rest of your life and continue to make money from it, right? So I'd love, I would love to hear your thoughts on this. Where do you stand? Do you feel like sample libraries in general are too expensive for the market in general, or do you find that the prices are going down? It's kind of a race to the bottom. Um, should developers be pushing the prices back up? Let me know your thoughts. Um, it's it's kind of a touchy subject, I think, for for some people, but hopefully you you'll uh, you'll feel comfortable enough to share with me, and I would love to hear your thoughts there. And again, if you are interested in my personal recommendations for the libraries that I actually do use, by the way, I do use both affordable and expensive libraries. It really just depends on what they offer and how practical I see those libraries, right? So if you're interested in the ones that I personally use on a day-to-day -day basis, then again, feel free to grab my sample library buyer's guide. Uh, it's the first thing in the box below. It's totally free. I don't know how many pages it is at this point, probably 60, 70 pages, but it's completely categorized with a table of contents. So you can scroll wherever you want, look at my recommendations. Again, I've put in the prices, the utilities, everything you need to know uh, about my thoughts there. So again, just, just grab it as my gift to you. There, you have no reason not to get it. Um, it's helped a lot of my students and I wanna give it to you as well in case you don't have it. So thank you again for watching. I really appreciate it. I'll catch you in the next video and take care. Bye-bye.